Hi, my name is Devin Knight, and I want to welcome you to a short video on how to build a basic Power App solution. This one's going to be incredibly basic. We're basically going to take an Excel workbook that I have, an Excel table, and have Power Apps build an app around it for us. This video goes with and it accompanies the video that I did previously on the Power BI custom visual using Power Apps. And so this is actually basically building the app that was used inside of that solution. So inside of that solution, I build out a very simple Power BI report, used it in the Power BI service, and I connect it into the Power Apps custom visual to display the app that we are about to build. And so I wanna walk you through how to build that application now. And so that way you have an idea of how easy it is to do Power App Solution. And you can certainly do things that are much more complicated than what I'm gonna show you today. But this is basically, like I said, going to take a data set that's already been created and then build an app around it for us. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so our starting point is going to be at powerapps.com. So if you go to powerapps.com, that'll redirect you to powerapps.microsoft.com. And you're gonna go ahead and sign in to an account. Now you might have to sign up for an account if this is brand new to you. You should know that Power Apps has a couple additions of how you can use it. One, if you're using Office 365, you likely already have an addition of Power Apps available to you. Uh, certain levels of Office 365 include some forms of Power Apps. There's also some additional paid subscriptions that you can do as well. And in addition to that, there is also a community edition that you can sign up for as well. And the community edition allows you to do development very easily with inside of Power Apps. And it's more, more for training purposes. You can't use it for production, but it's good for you to be able to learn. In fact, I have a community edition I've signed up for here. If I flip over to that community edition, you'll see here this is an, this is an individual environment and not meant for production use. Now, uh, I'm going to flip back to my regular environment here. And the environments, by the way, can kind of be used for like a dev, test, production kind of thing. And then you can also see some people use them for just uh, iterating through development. There's a lot of ways you can leverage environments, but uh, that is one way some people use them. Now, when we sign into powerapps.com, it's going to bring us to web.powerapps.com. And this is where we'll, you do a lot of our uh, management and sharing of our apps that we've designed. You can actually go relaunch and edit and change and play around with the apps that you've already designed. But our ultimate goal here is that we want to create a new app in this solution. And so if we want to create a new app, we need to launch the Power Apps Studio. And the way that we do that is I'm going to actually create an app based on a data set that I have. Okay, so if I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a couple options here where we can actually start from data, we can start from blank. And my scenario here, we're actually going to start from some data that I have. So I'm going to select that I want to start from data and use this template. These are all templates below here that you can choose from. There's a lot of good ones. You can actually take some of these templates and make them your own. So if you really want to use something like a budget tracker, you'll see a budget tracker found right here. It's a pretty good template and you can make it your own. Now I'm going to actually start from data, like I said, and I'm going to tell it that I want to make this app from a data set that I have. And so I'll select make this app and it's going to launch open the Power App Studio. When it does that, it's going to prompt me and ask, okay, well, where's the data coming from that you want to use? In my case, the data I'm going to be pulling from is going to be from my OneDrive from business account. Uh, so I'll select OneDrive for business and the connection I already have. Looks like I have that connection established more than once here. So I'll go ahead and uh, select the top one. And then we're going to choose the Excel file that we want to use for this example. So I have a file underneath my Power Apps folder called check-in process. And I'll go ahead and select that check-in process file. And it's going to prompt me to choose a table. Now, one key thing is the data inside of your Excel workbook does have to be stored in a physical Excel table. So if you haven't actually outlined the data and told it, hey, I want to insert this into a table, Power Apps will not recognize it. In fact, it will prompt you and say that your data must be stored in a table and it does not recognize any data in a table. So you need to go back and make a change there. Uh, you can certainly change the name of the table. Mine's called Table 1. That's fine for today. So I'll go ahead and select Table 1 and select Connect. Now this is actually going to start to build the app for me and it's launching the Power App Studio. Once that's done, I can hit skip and I can see that this app has actually already been created for me. So you can see on the left hand side a couple things. You have your screen navigation on the left hand side. From the screen navigation, you can flip back and forth between looking at all the different little elements that you have with inside of the screens to looking at more of just a screen toggle here if you wanted to as well. 
Now a screen is basically like a page on your app or a screen on your app. And if you go back and forth between the different screens here, you can see what they would look like. And I can zoom in a little bit more here for you so I can kind of get an idea of what the values look like. But the screens basically allow you to interact with your app. So for example, the detail screen here would just show the values that are inside of your data source. Whereas the edit screen would actually allow you to type in values and send that data back into, in my case, in my Excel workbook that's on OneDrive for Business. The browser screen allows me to just browse the values that I have. And if I hit the arrow navigation, that would launch open the detail screen, where then I can choose to launch the edit screen by clicking on the little pencil icon here. So this app was actually already built and designed for me. It has a nice set of things that have been done for me. I can, of course, change things like the theme up here. If I don't like the theme and I want to adjust that, you can do that. If you want to add new screens, so say, for example, I have an, a reason to add another screen, you can do that here. There's a lot of fun things you can do in here. You can change the order of these just to make it a little easier. You can even duplicate a screen if you wanted to and then make changes to the duplicate. There's some really interesting things you can do here. You can also insert other uh, elements here. So you can insert some, something, a very popular element called a gallery, which is actually what you're seeing here. The nice thing about how a gallery works is you can actually select with inside of the first cell. And if you make modifications to the first cell, it actually affects everything below it. So say, for example, I want to make this say first and last name with inside of just the single tile here. This is a single text box that I have. I can go up to this label control up to the very top here, and I can add and change this formula. Now, the formula bar that you see up top here uses something eh, somewhat similar to Excel formulas, but of course it's different. And essentially what you'll do is you'll select the properties that you want to modify right here in the, the properties pane. And you'll select from the drop down list the property you want to modify, and then you'll go into the formula bar and tell it how you want to modify it. So in this case, if I want to have the first and last name appear on the same label, I can come up to the top here and tell it that I want to concatenate, very similar to Excel. I want to concatenate an empty space. So very similar to Excel, use double quotes here. And then I'm going to call to our data set, which is going to be uh, this item, very similar to what you see on the left hand side where it already brought in the first name. And I'm going to bring in the last name. And if I select that, you can already see the results show below my first and last name appear. Now, if you want to modify the text, all of that kind of thing is done very similar to how it would be done in Word or PowerPoint. In fact, I would say this tool is kind of a combination of Excel and PowerPoint pulled together. You can see it looks like PowerPoint because you have the screens on the left-hand side, you have your whatever you're editing in the middle, and you have some properties on the right. And then, of course, like Excel, where you have the formula bar and the properties pieces are integrated here as well. All right, so if I want to modify something like the text here, I can go underneath the home ribbon and you can see I can change the text type. I can change the font size. So if I want to bump that up a little bit, I can. You can change whether or not it's bold or semi-bold or normal. That's up to you how you want to adjust that. Either easy to do. You can undo things. If you don't like what you did, you can do control Z and undo it. If you don't like that change, you can, of course, modify it. I'll leave it kind of like this as it appears here. Now you'll notice here below, I have uh, the last name appearing multiple times. So what I might do is I'll come in here and I'll tell it, well, I don't want to see the last name again. Rather than seeing the last name again, let's say something like I want to see the check-in time. So I can put check-in time here and you can see that check-in time is now showing. I'm also seeing the purpose of the visit right here. So the purpose of the visit is showing the cracked screen. If I wanted to, I could, again, format this any way I want. And you'll notice as you use this gallery control that I mentioned earlier, all you have to do is modify this one cell and everything below it is adjusted automatically with it. That includes the size of the, the cells themselves or the size of this section. So if I bump up the size, you can see it auto adjusts below to take up that same amount of si a section or same amount of size for everything below it as well. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change the title of this. I'll call this appointments because this app, so I haven't, haven't really described what the purpose of this app is, the purpose of this app is to be able to take appointments for uh, our, our, our business that is basically kind of like a you broke your phone, we'll fix it for you kind of thing. So you can walk in the door, the customer can walk in the door, and on the, the table when they walk in is they can actually type in their information, which is going to be in our edit form over here. We'll talk about this here in a moment. And then as a associate there, I can actually browse through the appointments and select them and make modifications to them. Say, for example, I add in a check out time when I'm done working with them, I can modify those values here. Maybe I add in some notes. If I wanted to do that, I could do that as well. All right, so we talked about the edit form. Let's go look at the edit form. If you go over here, this is your edit screen. And again, you may want to modify the way this appears. Right now, it actually shows the uh, table name here. I, maybe I want to come up here and call this uh, edit record. OK, 
okay? And then as you do that, you can actually come in and change the order of these values if you wanted to. You can also see the navigation below here. So you can see that we're looking at right now the edit screen with inside of an edit form. And then we're per right now I have selected this uh, particular control that is uh, looking at a data field here. Uh, you can modify these if you wanted to. Right now they start off by being locked. You can see a little like lock icon appearing there. But you can actually modify these by going under the advanced section and you can click unlock and that allows you to modify this. So for example, you'll see that the, the names of the fields are pretty terrible. Uh, that's just the way they came in. So if you wanna modify those, you can go over to and unlock it like I showed you just a moment ago. And then you can modify the display name here to be something more meaningful or something that's just not crazy like it was a moment ago. Now when you do this, you do have to unlock every field. So I'd have to come over here and do this for every single field. I'd go over to the advanced, select the field again, modify it. So you're gonna see me do this here for a few of these. But this is your way to kind of clean this up to make this look a little nicer. And then we'll get to kind of resorting these after we rename these. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. We're already about halfway done here. And let's unlock this one as well. Okay. And then we'll get the purpose of the visit. So unlock this one again. Again, you gotta always unlock it. So that's my thing I have to remember as well is how to unlock that I need to unlock it as I look at them. And then let's finish this one up. Okay, so now you can see all of those have been renamed. By the way, we're gonna have to do that again on the detail screen. The detail screen is where it's more of a display. The edit screen is where you're actually going to allow your users to enter in values or edit existing values. All right, so now that we've got those renamed, let's go ahead and fix the sort order of these. And so we can do that by selecting any one of these values, really. And then we can go underneath the uh, property side on the right-hand side, and you'll see fields. If you click edit, this actually allows you to kind of change the, the order of these values here. So you can kind of flip them around some if you want. You can see as I resort them that they change their sort order here. So I probably want to put something like the first name up top, then maybe the last name. And then let's put in the check-in time, the purpose of the visit, and then checkout time will be last because that will be the last thing that we need to change. You can also change the orientation of this or the layout of this. Right now it's set to vertical. You could change it to horizontal if you prefer something like that view. Uh, this one's kind of nice if you had more of a full page. I, I designed this as a mobile app, but if I had more of a full page design surface, this one might be more useful. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to flip that back to the orientation that we had a moment ago of vertical. I think that's a better layout for reports on your phone or edit screens on your phone. All right, so this one's looking pretty good. I think I'm happy with this one. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to go back over to our detail screen. And so from our detail screen, I'm going to go ahead and, of course, rename this. So we want to make sure this is set to something that is easy so we can say this is our uh, view record. And from underneath here, again, we can modify each of these fields to have a better name. Now, uh, the way we do that, just a reminder, I went the wrong way there for a moment. You select the control, click on the unlock cha to change properties, and then you simply go in and modify each of the names. So you'll see me do this again. And it's just part of the cleanup process of building an app in Power Apps. And you can change the sort order of this. So this will be a good reminder of how to do that after we modify this, we'll change the sort order again. And again, you do have the undo capabilities. Now, I am using the web editor. I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit as I'm finishing up the change here. I'm, I'm actually using the web editor for uh, Power Apps. There was, and technically still is, a desktop editor that you can download inside the Windows Store. But just recently, they've actually made the decision, Microsoft has made the decision to go all in on the web editor. So going forward, you really should stick with just using the web editor. Uh, they're going to focus their attention more on the web editor anyway. So everything I've shown you is really the way to do it as far as building apps in this application. Although, again, you should note there still is, at least as of the time I'm recording this, a desktop app as well. Okay, so I've changed the names of those. Now, again, if I want to resort those, select somewhere inside of here, go over to properties. We're going to select that we want to edit the fields. And then this is, by the way, this is where you have some control over where the data is coming from. So I can change where the data is coming from here. And then what I want to do is I want to resort the order of these. Again, I'm going to push the first name up, the last name up, the check-in time can stay there, and then I'll move up the purpose of the visit. All right, so I'll close that out. I think our screens are looking pretty good here. It looks like the interaction's nice. Let's go ahead and test this out. So to test this out, you'll hit the little play button up in the top right to preview the app. 
And then now we can actually interact with this. So if we wanted to go look at an existing record, we can select into one of these records. You can see all the navigation already works. We can edit a record or we can delete a record here. So if I wanted to, I could edit this record and maybe just put some gibberish there. Hit OK. Or maybe I could have given it a checkout time that I didn't have before. Maybe I'm the employee and I came in and I finally checked this person out. So I can come back in and do that. Give it a date. OK. And tell it they checked out, you know, maybe 30 minutes or so later. Whatever. And then hit uh, the checkbox on that to submit that item. It's now going to submit that back to my OneDrive for Business Excel file. So keep that in mind. And then again, use the back navigation here to get back to where I was. You can see the record has been updated. Again, if you select it here, you can see that showing up in the beauty detail as well. Some other key things with the navigation, you do have a search here. So I can search for Manuel if I wanted to, and I can see Manuel's records are brought back. If he had more than one, I would see all those. And then the other thing is, of course, you can add new records. So if I select that I want to create a new item here, it's going to allow me to go to the edit record screen, and I can type in a new person. So maybe I type in Nick Lee. And I can give it a start time or a check-in time of today. And give it a date or a time, I should say. Now, this is 4 a.m. Let's make it something a little bit more reasonable. All right. And then I can say that he's having problems with the home button. Hit period on that. Maybe he's just checked in, so I don't need to necessarily give him a checkout time yet. So I'll hit submit on that. And then that new record will now show up on my appointment screen. And so if I want to go into that appointment as an associate, I can select it. And then I can click edit to tell it and give it a checkout time and say, hey, I'm done with Nick. Nick's problem has been solved. I could have added another field in my spreadsheet for you know, how I dealt with the problem. But um, you know, this is fine as well. All right, so I can hit the submit item. Now I've given it a checkout. And I can go back. And you, again, you can see that record now shows up here. And I've added a checkout time, which I don't have on this home gallery or this gallery on the home screen. I would have to go dig in to see that. There's some refresh capabilities, but we're seeing the refresh happen immediately. You can change the sort order here if you wanted to as well. But I think we're looking pretty good on this one. So if you're happy with an app, we tested it out. If you're happy with the app and you want to actually use this, you can then go up to the file menu here and tell it that you want to save this. And so I can save this. I've already saved this once. I can call this uh, Check In App 2 or something like that and then hit save. Now this is gonna save this app, and once it does, I have it available to me, and I can pick this app inside of the Power BI custom visual for Power Apps, and I can start to use it. You can also share this and kind of socialize this with others here. If I hit share this app, I can share it with others. I can also, uh, there's some versioning that's baked into Power Apps, so if I had multiple versions of development that I've done, I can select see versions, and I would be able to see all the versions here. And you can have some versions that you're developing that aren't live and some that are. It's all kind of built into this versioning capability. So really cool stuff. They've add, they're adding in some analytics around this so you can see the usage. There's some Power BI reports around that. And again, you can come in here and affect the sharing or you can go back and edit the app again. You can also use this export package option to be able to move things from dev to test to production kind of thing. So that's really it for this one. Uh, again, now that I have this third app here called Check App, I should have called that Check In App, that's okay. I can now see this app from my mobile device. I can share it with others and they can see it from their mobile device. And then I can use it from my mobile device as well. I can even have a tablet sitting on fr in, in my front area of my business and then people can type in their values to check themselves in. So very simple little app, but it's great for doing the purpose of what we needed it to here. Hope you guys enjoyed this and it gave you a little tutorial of how I built the small app, very simple version of an app. There, it's much more complicated in here if you wanted to, but the simple version of an app to get started with Power Apps. And this again accompanies the video that I did for the Power BI custom visual for Power Apps. Hope you guys enjoy this. Take care and have a great day.